Hi everyone, so let's quickly start over with what streaming services are and how uh, they became so popular in the past decade. So streaming services are online providers of various entertaining content, such as music, series or TV shows uh, that allow their viewers to watch their, uh, to profit from their reaches uh, via an internet connection uh, for, a, for a subscription that you can pay weekly, monthly or yearly. Mm. How does streaming work? So it may seem pretty tough at the beginning, but actually if you think about it, it's pretty simple. Most of the data that is uh, sent over by the internet is, uh, is broken down into smaller packets of data, each containing a file that is sent over to video or audio players that recognize the data as either video or audio. The most incredible thing about streaming is the fact that unlike downloading, it doesn't take up any space on your device. Instead of occupying storage on your tablet, phone or laptop, it actually stores the data only temporarily when the videos buffer, meaning that uh, the data is there only for some moment when it is loading a piece of a video at a time. Mm -hmm. So you most, pr most probably all of you recognize the most admired uh, streaming platform that is Netflix. You most probably all know the huge letter N popping up everywhere. Uh, but how has Netflix become so popular? So Netflix was uh, started as a DVD movie rental in the late 90s and after 10 years it has made a shift that would change the world. In 2007 they started their streaming platform but they still kept the rental. Mm, uh, they weren't that popular however until 2016 when they reached the whole world by expanding their services to 150 countries more, not only America, including Poland. Mm, so in, in the middle of 2010s people were fed up with what traditional TV had to offer. The shows were so similar that all of the content felt monotonous. The commercials were popping up everywhere and they took almost half of the shows. And the prices were only getting bigger and bigger for really nothing. Um, that's when it was Netflix's golden opportunity. It had everything a series lover could dream about. Unlimited new and original content, uh, no commercials, and most importantly, was really cheap. Nobody thought that those streaming platforms could get even more admired, and that was when COVID broke out. Uh, people started buying memberships to stream their favorite shows or to procrastinate while watching a movie or a series that would interest them. So uh, just as most of uh, the factors uh, present in our lives, uh, streaming platforms have shaped our likes and dislikes. They have displaced the traditional TV totally and they made it almost irrelevant. Traditional TV, um, as I've said before, has wasn't enough for people anymore and they were just tired of how it worked. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, people loved TV shows and they would gather up in front of a TV for a duration of a whole season to make sure that they wouldn't skip a single episode. A great example of how important uh, TV shows used to be to, no, to an average human being was, is the show Friends. Mm. The one episode could bring almost half of the Americans in front of the TV. Right now, it would be, it's almost impossible to bring half of a nation in front of a TV after the show is released on the first day. Why? Because we have access to the shows all the time. Uh, the streaming platforms provide this freedom that television cannot. They allow their viewers to do whatever they want with the shows. They can start watching them, stop in the middle, and come back after two years when they suddenly know what, when they suddenly want to know what happened next. And the traditional TV ca couldn't, cannot, and most probably won't be able to provide this in the future, in the nearest future. Technically, it is possible to re re like rewatch your favorite episodes on a TV when it, when they are airing at a certain moment or record your favorite shows, but it doesn't really work if you think about it in the long term. 
Um, another thing that string, uh, streaming platforms provide uh, are the personalization, is the personalization of content. So it actually helps us with being entertained better because we don't have to look for the shows ourselves. If we look, if we like go on Netflix's page, the first thing popping up is top picks for you, which lets you pick a series or a movie like this. You don't even have to think about what you want to watch. You just click on the first thing that pops up because this is what they feel is going to be the best for you. Also, uh, streaming uh, platforms have more content generally than TV channels. I don't know if any of you has ever thought about it, but generally speaking, streaming platforms have more creative freedom than normal TV channels. Why? Because the filmmakers and generally series creators, they aren't buffered by anything. The only thing that really keeps them from creating is their own imagination and safety. Mm, unlike, uh, unlike traditional TV creators who aren't as privileged, they have to think about the particular audience of the particular channel that they're creating for. And streaming platform creators also have to think about their ob audience, obviously, but they don't have to be so specific about it. Mm, another important factor that Netflix has changed and streaming platforms have changed in general is the expansion of local culture to a greater public. So if you look at uh, the streaming platform's content, the content is very varied. It's, it comes from different countries. It comes from even different continents. Like, for example, if you go to Netflix, you can watch Korean dramas anytime you want. Um, it's actually really helpful because this indirectly helps us with experiencing new cultures without even leaving our houses. Uh, technically, it was possible before because there were documentaries, but it wasn't in fiction movies or series. Right now, you can watch a fiction movie and still learn something from it. Also, uh, streaming platforms, this way, they also indirectly help us with learning, for example, a new language. Oh, uh, have any of you heard about the Netflix effect? Has anyone heard about it? Oh, great, no one. OK, so <laughs> the Netflix effect is the uh, impact that Netflix, ha Netflix has on trend setting in fashion, interior design, uh, games, and many, many more. So uh, it is kind of obvious that an app that we spend so much time on shapes our, uh, like, shapes the tendencies. But have you ever thought about how they do that? OK, so uh, basically, as I have said before, Streaming platforms have changed how advertising works, but advertising is still there. There are no commercials, but there's product placement. And a great example of a, a great product placement is the Vans, the shoe company. Uh, Vans was featured in two of the Netflix's most famous uh, series, Squid Game and Stranger Things. After Squid Game's release, uh, Vans's sales rose by 7,800%, which is a really insane number if we, if we look at the, um, if the, at the charts. Um, another, uh, like another two shows that have also shaped the tendencies are Queen's Gambit and Bridgerton. After Queen's Gambit's release, an, a really unexpected boom happened. People started playing chess again, and uh, generally the the game sales rose to a thousand percent, which is also a lot. And um, another thing that uh, Queen's Gambit has brought in was the check pattern in fashion that we can notice even now after a couple of years. Um, it is a bit different with Bridgerton, however. I mean, we don't see people walking around in Regency era clothes, <laughs> although I have to say it would be a really nice show because those dresses are so beautiful and um, <laughs> whatever. But um, they have brought back some interior design uh, things that are really incredible if you think about it because they brought back stucco, porcelain, and even surprisingly chandeliers. Um, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, nothing can be too good, however, and even though streaming platforms have a lot of pros, they also have a lot of cons, especially if you think about your mental and but also physical health. 
Um, the biggest problem when it comes to streaming is my favorite activity, binge watching. Uh, binge watching is great when you want to relax after a tiring day at school or work, but, and it may seem harmless, but it actually causes many bad impacts. Um, so uh, when we are binge watching, we usually don't notice how much time we're spending when we are binge watching. We all have been in a situation, or most of us have been in a situation where we said, I'm just going to watch one episode or just one episode more. And we ended up watching half of the season or maybe the whole series if somebody's really into it. Um, but uh, this actually is a type of an addiction if you think about it. Because we have started and we cannot stop. And Actually, binge watching encourages behavioral addictions. Um, another thing that binge watching encourages are sedentary behaviors. Sedentary behaviors are behaviors that don't increase the level of energy in our bodies, meaning that they, they we could really call them procrastinating. Um, people would often sit on their couch and watch a series rather than go work out, which part of a bad diet can cause many health issues such as obesity and obesity-related diseases such as, I don't know, uh, diabetes, um, cardiovascular issues, or even strokes. Um, another thing about binge watching is that it also increases the level of dopamine in our bodies meaning that dopamine is really, is like a hormone known for its soothing function, giving us a sense of pleasure. And actually, the fact that it increases is a bad thing when we're watching, because after we finish, it start, slowly starts to downsize. And therefore, uh, we get more defensive, also irritated, and Mm, and sometimes some people even have bursts of anger. And this is really dangerous because this causes disruptions with your family and your friends, but also when it comes to commitments and ambitions. Mm, another thing is uh, another thing is the fact that during COVID, uh, people were sitting at home and they didn't really know what to do with themselves. So they would just like binge watch generally. And um, they, this caused many uh, mental health disruptions, such as uh, depression and anxiety, because people weren't going out and some people still aren't. And this is really, really dangerous. Uh, another thing that binge watching encourages is the problems with uh, good posture, uh, which may seem kind of stupid if you think about it, because well, what can good posture do? But actually, if you think about it, um, good posture is really important because uh, lower back muscles are crucial when it comes to the respiratory function of our lungs. And this means that if they are worsened or compromised, uh, this can cause br uh, problems with breathing in the future. Okay, but how does the future of streaming look? The future of streaming is very, very bright. Uh, people still buy the memberships, they aren't resigning. There are a lot of, uh, their revenues are increasing. And, um, and there are two possibilities that uh, experts say will happen. First, uh, the bigger platforms like Netflix and Hulu or Amazon Prime Video are going to absorb the smaller ones and therefore leaving us with less content and bigger prices because they're going to be the main competitors on the market and therefore they will be the one controlling the prices. The second alternative is that there will be more uh, streaming platforms which uh, will also lead to their development and this will lead to bigger, con like more content uh, but also cheaper prices and possible changes in the memberships because right now you can choose a membership like based on the quality of a video and on how many uh, devices you can have your Netflix, for example. But then if there is a shift, there could be, they, they could add some inconveniences for a cheaper price, for example, commercials. Generally speaking, no matter what happens to streaming platforms right now, they are going to 
this isn't really going to affect us at, at, at any point because the main effects that they have uh, already they have already caused, and at this point, everything could only get better or worse. Thank you. <laughs>